All right, in this video, we are going to look at one application of the list global variable. Um, had a request for this, so I'm going to go ahead and post this up. And what you may notice is that the, the layout I have here it looks very similar to the layout I did on an older video, but I'm covering two different ideas. Um, this older video was triggering two global variables with Tasker. Uh, as a matter of fact, since I made this video, you can actually trigger two global variables with KOWP without even using Tasker now. So that video is old, but uh, you know, you're know, you definitely getting something different out of here. And what I want to uh, show you is the list global variable and one of its applications. So let's go ahead and have a look. I'm going to go inside of KLWP. And basically what I want this list global variable to do is I want it to... Uh, when I touch these things down here, I want these things to come across the screen. Now, you may say, okay, yeah, I've done a video on that. Yes, I have. I have done videos on the text global variable. It's one of my favorite global variables to use, but this is another way of doing that. Um, so, you know, here's one application of the list global variable. Let's go ahead and add that list global variable, and I'm going to call it whatever. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it show, because basically I want it to show one of these items I have in my list. Now in the list I'm going to call it, right now I have a battery, I have weather, you can call these whatever you want, and then what was the other one? Music. Alright, so I'm separating them with a comma and that's what's going to break these things up uh, when you go to look at your list. So now if we look, we called it show, and if I tap on that, as you can see, the comma is separating these. You don't see the comma anymore, but we have battery, we have weather, we have music. All right, and you can go ahead and select one of these now if you want to. It doesn't really matter. But now we have to go back and apply the touches, and we have to apply the animations to each individual piece. So let's go ahead and go to the dock. This nothing fancy here. Um, we'll go to my dock, and the M right here is going to be for music. So when I touch this overlap group M, I'm going to go to touch, and I'm going to toggle a global switch. And the global switch I want to toggle is the only one I have called show. And I want to set it equal to, now here's what's nice about it. You know, you can just pick them based on what you created. Whereas when I use the text global variable, I have to actually type in some type of code here. Here I just go, bam, music. When I touch this thing, I want it to trigger the music word in my list that I created. We'll apply an animation in a second. So let's go ahead and uh, go on back and let's apply the touch to the B for battery. So when I touch this overlap group, I want to toggle a global switch. And same global variable, but now we want to uh, do the battery. All right, there we go. And then last but not least, uh, the W, this overlap group, when I touch it, I want to... Um, make that list variable become weather. So I'm doing the same thing. There we go. So just like that we have our touches on all three of these little buttons down here in our dock. So now um, for testing purposes, this you don't have to do this but I'm going to do it anyway. Let me add some text and let me scroll on down to this text. And let's see if we can get KOWP to show us what it is. Just to, This is just for teaching you, showing you um, really what's going on. So let's just type in uh, GV show, because that's what I called that global variable. And as you can see, it says battery. Um, if you recall, that's actually what I set it to a moment ago when I first created that global variable. And let me bump this on to the center, just so we can see it. Actually, let me bump it to the bottom. And I'm going to knock it up a little bit. So basically, when we touch one of these things, hopefully that word will change. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. All right, looks good to me. Let me save. I'm not doing anything animating yet. I'm just uh, showing you really what's going on. So when we touch these buttons, it should change. If I touch M, it should say music. Bam. If I touch B, it should say battery. Bam. If I touch W, it should say weather. Okay. Now, um, the only thing about using it like this, this is only going to open this thing up. Uh, here's what I mean. Let's go ahead and apply some animations. 
All right. So going back, whoops, I don't want to go all the way back to the home screen. Let's go back to uh, one of those items, the weather, the battery, and the music. So let's go back to root. Um, M is the music. Now right now we can't see it, but I think it's the blue and it's kind of hidden behind. You might say, well, how can I get it to come back up? If I just come right here and put it in front of the B and the W, this is the one I'm talking about. So M. Uh, opening M up, that's my music stuff. If I go to animation, it's this entire group, and I'm going to put a plus, and I want it to react on. Now, let's see. If we react on a global switch, and if we try to select global switch, we can't do it because it's not the right global switch thing that we want to react on. So here we still got to do a formula. And I want to say if GV show this is the music one so if it's equal to music I want this thing to animate so basically I'm gonna say one to move it forward zero to move it back basically what's going to happen here whenever that list global variable that we called show whenever it's going to be equal to music I want this thing to move forward or animate forward and if it's not equal to music I want it to go back uh, backwards or back to wherever it came from you know whether you fade it in then you want to fade it out or if you scroll it in you want to scroll it out if you zoom it in or scale it in you want to scale it out and so forth so I'm gonna go ahead and check that now what type of animation do we want to do if this thing is equal to music I want it to fade in all right now as you can see this thing uh, that music just disappeared on us now yours may not have done that it depends sometimes the advanced editor here will not update on the fly so I'm going to go ahead and save I'm going to go back to my home screen now right now I'm at battery remember the code we just typed in if GV show is equal to music we want this thing to fade in and if it's not we want it to go away that's what the one and the zero did so if I touch M for music it should fade in now what if I make this thing not equal to music basically if I touch my battery or my weather if I touch my B notice it does fade out if I go back to my music, if I touch W, I'm changing that value of that list global variable or whatever entry I had. So as you can see, it is going away. Now what we have to do here is go back and apply the same type of code to each individual piece. So we just did that to the music. Let's go and do the same thing to the battery. Um, and I tell you what, let me actually, let me show you a little shortcut here. Since we've already applied the animation for our music, let me just copy and let me go back to B for battery animation. Let me paste that animation. Now, obviously, we need to change this code, though, in the formula, because now we are in, I just forgot, and I just said it. Which one am I in? B, battery. I'm in battery. So I'm going to change the word music to battery. All right, so check. And let's go ahead and apply the code to the other piece, the weather. Let me paste, changing the code, and then we'll change it to weather. All right, so that should be good. And now right now the list global variable, that text I added a few minutes ago, right now it's battery, so that's all we're seeing up here. And I'm gonna show you one of the, the one of the setbacks about using the list versus using the text global variable. And um, here it is right here. So going back to the home screen, now this is going to work quite nicely just by cycling back and forth. I got music, as you can see the battery goes away, um, and we have them going in and out. Now you may say, what's that text that we see there? You know that it says like 115 February 8th, 2016. That is what's behind all of these things. But these are kind of, you know, animating in and out based on whatever I have it set to and whatever I have it coded to animate uh, in correspondence to the battery or the buttons down here. Now here's the drawback. How do we make this go away? And suppose we don't want music or uh, weather to show, but I just want to see that text that, you know, watch, look, look at this little text behind this stuff as it fades in and out. What if I just want to see that? That's one of the drawbacks about lists, but we can fix it. And I'm, um, what we can do here uh, to get rid of battery, like how can we press this thing again and um, basically make the, we want to see that uh, time and date back there behind it. 
Well, what we're going to have to do is create another one um, in this case. This is one way to take care of it using the, uh, using the list global variable. So um, this is also worth showing you that, you know, once you create this global, if we check that, that one we called show, if I just come here and I say, um, if I just add an extra one down here, let's call it uh, clear. All right, let's call it clear. And here's a little cheat that you can cheat around this. Um, I don't use this, but it's it it, re, it will work out to where if we just have something. Uh, how can we do this? Let's go to doc. I'm going to copy and paste that W, and I'm just going to change that W, and I ain't gonna change the font. I'm just going call it clear C L E A R you can call it whatever you want and let me make it a little bit smaller that way it just fits inside the box alright cool and let's change the touch of this entire overlap group now what did we call this overlap group is still okay the clear one we have the the music the battery the weather and now we have this clear button so when I touch this clear box right here I want to toggle my global switch uh, for this show and I want to set it to clear. All right. So there we go. I think this is going to fix it. Let's save, go back to the home screen. And what do we have? So there we have weather, we have music, um, we have battery. And what if I want everything to go away, regardless of what's shown? If we press clear, or whatever, like if you just have some type of home button, think about it like that, the home button um, will take you back to this screen. So, you know, we're still going back and forth. I can go weather, battery, I want to clear, bam. Music, weather, music, clear, bam. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like a little button down here that basically says, okay, remember these codes? If the global variable show was equal to music, you know, we want the music to pop up, bam, it's equal to music, we want music to pop up. But what if it's not equal to music? We want the music to go away, such as battery. So the code here is, if the global variable show is equal to battery, we want to show this one. Or what if it's not battery? What if I don't want to see any of these things? I don't want to see weather, I don't want to see music, I don't want to see battery. This is what will fix it. There's your clear button. All right, so there you have it. That is one application of the list global variable. There are plenty of applications here from what I have seen and read. I haven't used a lot of the list global variable, but I did get some requests for it, and um, I'm a big fan of the text global variable, but uh, th that's just me. Everybody's different, but um, there you have it. That's it for this video. Hope it helped.